This video is very unplanned, as you can see. Um, I'm gonna be putting my makeup on because I have somewhere I need to be pretty shortly. But leading up to this book release, I have been dealing with a lot of questions like, what if the reader doesn't like it? How do I know that they're gonna like it? What if it doesn't do well? What if nobody wants to read it? The, the typical, I think every author deals with this in some capacity of like, how do I know if I've written a good book? So huge shout out to Katie Wismer. I will link her video below where she talked about this book because the moment she shared it, I was like, I have to read that. She's literally asking the question that I want to know. So seven figure fiction, how to use universal fantasy to sell your book to anyone. I literally stopped Katie's video, went to Amazon, started reading the like the excerpt, the teaser that they give you. And I was like, I, I have to know more. Cause again, you don't know if readers will love what you're writing, but she's like, there is a way to know if readers will love your writing. And it's something called universal fantasy. I'm gonna use the camera to put this on. No, that's a bad idea. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I'm not good at this. I don't know if I can talk and put eyeliner on at the same time, but universal fantasy is exactly what it sounds like actually, where it's like, it's something that is a universal fantasy for everyone. So for example, unconditional love, something we all would want and enjoy reading about, right? Don't mind me while I try to like do this without messing up on camera. <laughs> enough. So I literally read this book in one night and I was like, I want to rewrite my whole story. <laughs> I'm only, what is it, a week and a half from release? It's Thanksgiving today and a secret gift comes out on December um, 5th, which is a Monday. Yeah, there's no way. I don't, there's no time to rewrite it. But here's the thing. And this is what I'm really struggling with. She's describing these universal fantasies, right? And then she gives you homework for like, look at your favorite, you know, TV shows and movies and characters for this, this, and this, and try to find the things that draw you to them. So like, for example, I love the TV show Friends. And so I was like doing the homework and I was trying to be like, well, maybe it's because the universal fantasy is like living with your best friends and never having to be alone. I mean, that seems like a universal fantasy, right? And then she actually uses examples like Pride and prejudice where it's like this amazing rich guy who they say won't choose anyone chooses you like that's a pretty cool fantasy that a lot of people would enjoy experiencing um she also uses beauty and the beast for like 10 different universal fantasies sorry this is another thing that i probably shouldn't do while talking but we're gonna go with it so like i said i wasn't planning to do this video but i just felt like i need to tell you guys about this book i don't know where exactly it's gonna go on my release lineup but if i'm being brutally honest with you i have been dealing with a lot of doubts about the book release. A lot of readers have loved it and it's like 10 to one, but the one person who doesn't love it is like on my brain all the time. And I'm not, I don't have a lot of confidence. So reading this book, it's like, okay, hold on, I gotta do the bottom. <laughs> so reading this book, I'm like, she's like talking about how this is how you can know if a reader's gonna like it. I wish that I'd found this book when I was writing it. Not now. I shouldn't pause mid makeup, but I wanted to show you because then I went into my notes app and here's all my notes from the book, right? So I have like my homework and then a bunch of universal fantasy stuff that it's not quite the same as tropes, but sometimes it does fall in line with tropes a little bit, but it's like, here are the things that if you inject these into your blurb and you let readers know like this universal fantasy is in here. Like for example, I went to do the homework for The Stolen Kingdom, which is one of my earlier books, if you don't know. And I think I accidentally had some universal fantasies in there already. So universal fantasies in The Stolen Kingdom. I literally have them written out here. Escaping from a life you don't want, in this case, arranged marriage and forced to keep her secrets. She has a super cool secret power we wish we all had hearing thoughts finding family who takes you in it's like the found family trope but it's like you're creating your own family is how she describes it in the book and in this case it's Caden's crew becoming an important slash vital part of something bigger than herself the heist and a spoiler that I shouldn't tell you <laughs> towards the end and another spoiler but you know it can't be in the blur but it could still be a universal fantasy yeah I can't tell you that one either because that's the ending but you get the idea I should finish this I really quick hold on Anyway, in case it wasn't clear, I am obsessed with this book and I read it all last night and now in the light of day today, I'm like, I need to read it again because I need to figure out better ways to apply it to The Secret Gift, which I kind of did last night, but I'm like, I need to review it today. So here's what I had last night so far. Without changing anything, I just wrote down again, a list of things that could potentially be considered a universal fantasy, but did I do it well? That's what I'm freaking out about because it's like, I don't know until like a reader reads it, you know what I mean? So 
first universal fantasy, and this is like based off the stuff she shared in the book, is she is gonna be breaking all kinds of rules by being a shifter that everyone's afraid of. And of course, she's also not telling anyone. And then worse yet, they go into the human world. And then there's some spoilers at the end that I can't tell you about, but lots of rule breaking, which is considered a universal fantasy. Ah, this one I can't tell you about because it comes in at the end. Super cool secret power again that we all wish we had. Shape shifting is pretty dang cool. I, I'm so in my head right now because this book isn't out yet. I'm like, did I portray the universal fantasy well? Did I do a good job? You know what I mean? <sighs> I'm trying to remind myself that I technically released this book once already and it was very well received and maybe that's because I accidentally had some of these universal fantasies in it like powerful woman who saves herself without going into detail. What she calls the opposite world aka a lot of fantasy obviously has this naturally built in. It's like a really cool world that doesn't line up with ours and that's what I tried to do. And then you know that makeover <laughs> fantasy that of course we all love it. As soon as she talked about that I was like yeah that one is super fun. I love watching movies where the main character has a makeover of some type and it's like okay Okay, in a way Jezebel does have that, but is it like, does it fit the universal fantasy? You know what I mean? So I attempted to like rewrite sort of a blurb with some of the universal fantasies in there. And I was like, I think this blurb is better than the original, but like I kind of want to put them side by side and be like, okay, which one's better? So there's like the one that is up on Goodreads right now. And you can always change blurbs, by the way. There's nothing saying you can't as an author. If you find something that sells the book better, change it. But in this case, I don't know if it'll sell the book better or not. So I thought I'd run it by you guys just to give you an example. And keep in mind, this is a very rough draft, but let me screenshot it so I can like actually share it with you. I had a lot of trouble knowing if I was using universal fantasies with that because I was just guessing. But with book two, I was like, yes, this is going to help me write book two. So just to give you a sneak peek, I won't tell you book three because there's a lot of spoilers there, but book two, I think is okay. Ah, oh, dang it. Maybe it's not. Okay, I'm gonna put a little spoiler thing here if you're okay hearing it like you're like I'll forget by the time book two comes out But I'm gonna I'm gonna share it because I'm like I really want to know if this is good So here's what is on Goodreads currently for book two and then here is what I kind of like wrote with the Universal fantasies kind of injected into it. Yeah, like these are obviously reading like first drafts And I want to show you book three because I'm like most excited about that one But again going back to the book here. <laughs> she talks about so many universal fantasies and she gives you kind of a list as you go through and like pulls examples out of movies and books and the competition is a universal fantasy like Harry Potter had competition and I can think of so many movies where you're competing with other people I really should go dry my hair quick it's really cool like as I go into writing book two or technically editing because I have written book two already the first draft but as I edit it I'm going to inject a lot more competition and I can totally picture it and it's gonna work so well with the story and it's like if I hadn't known of that as a universal fantasy idea, I might not have really played into it so much, but now that I know, I can like really play up on it. All that to say, I'm still questioning myself a lot for this release, and I'm like, did I naturally put in universal fantasies into The Secret Gift? I think so, but did I really play up on them? I don't know, I'm not sure. I mean, the only way to know is if you guys let me know, but can you tell I'm panicking a little bit? I gotta go, keep getting ready, I gotta dry my hair really quick, I'll be back. Okay, I'm back and I'm just thinking out loud like that was not my best review. I've never done a book review on my channel before, I don't think, so it was very scattered. Like, I probably should have taken the time to compose my thoughts, but that was more of like a gut reaction and a realistic what life is like behind the scenes of a book release right now. I am, the more work that you put into something, the more panicky you feel when you're like, I don't know if this is gonna land, you know what I mean? And so I don't know if other authors feel that way, but I just wanna say again, shout out to Katie Wismer. I'll link her channel below. Love her videos and I just really, really appreciated that she mentioned this book because at the very least, I can rewrite my blurb to start injecting more of these universal fantasies into it. And that's perfect timing. Little Zion just woke up, so I'm gonna go get him. Yeah, it's Thanksgiving, got places to be, things to do, but yeah, I hope you don't mind this kind of chaotic book review interrupting release week. I hope that you'll go order the secret gift if you're interested in it at all. If it sounds even remotely interesting to you and you do happen to read it, let me know if you think it hits any of these universal fantasies. I would really, really, really like to hear from you because I'm so in my head right now. And seriously, if you review, there's a bunch of reviews already. I'll post some of them on the screen here that have been coming in already that have meant so, so much to me and have been so encouraging.
Okay, it is December 1st today and I am coming back to wrap up after that last clip because things were kind of left hanging. It's only four days to book release. I am still panicking in case you're wondering. But what I ended up doing is I sent my, that rough draft of the new book blurb that I'd written that I showed you guys to one of my critique partners, Jessie Elliott, and she works magic with blurbs, you guys. She is so good at them. And so she just took it to the next level and I was just so excited. So then after I got her feedback, I ended up editing it just a little bit more, mostly at the very end, to make sure that the stakes were really high and then it made you kind of ask a question and want to know more. And then I updated all the vendors, all six of them, and Goodreads. Gosh, I'm so excited. Are you ready to see it? <laughs> I'm going to put it on the screen here for you. If you want to pause to read it, please feel free. I'm really excited about it. But then also I will put it side by side with the old blurb so you can kind of read and compare if you're interested and if you're anything like me and you just really want to see the differences. I know I would enjoy that so I thought I'd share that with you guys and ultimately I'm really excited about this blurb after some thought I realized that the old first line which hinted at the evil queen stuff is more helpful if you've read the stolen kingdom series and you know who she is there but this is her villain origin story it is not starting out as an evil queen that blurb didn't make sense to people who have never heard of my series before and don't even know who she is it just didn't feel right i think when it comes to the three book compilation when they're all done i plan to bind them up together in a separate book kind of like the collector's edition and we've already got the cover art started for that three book compilation or whatever i'm gonna end up calling it so it's gonna be amazing but that tagline in bold on the old blurb will just fit so much better on the compilation where she has her full arc versus book one is not necessarily the full decline <laughs> into being a villain yet. You know, she's got two more books to go, you guys. So I just noticed that for people who didn't know the original series and didn't know me very well and didn't know about my books, they were a little more thrown by that first line. And so that also made me realize that we could do better. So let me know what you think because I honestly just want to know. I feel like you guys are my test group and as hard as it is to ask for feedback, knowing that you might not love everything about it, it. I still want to be open to that, but also please do tell me the positives and the things you do like because I really need to hear that as well or I can get very much in my own head and start wondering if I'm even in the right career or maybe I should just give up. It's not usually that drastic, but there have been a few days like that where I'm like, am I even good at this? So anyway, we are only four days from release, but by the time you see this video, the release date will be tomorrow and I am so incredibly excited. So I'm gonna get back to editing all the videos <laughs> that I have in store for you guys and the newsletter and the ARC reader emails and publishing the paperback on KDP a little bit early for my international readers and getting ready with the pre-order incentives which are gonna be so much fun to send out. So yeah, I better stop wasting time because Zion's about to wake up any minute. So I'm gonna get back to editing and staring at my pretty Christmas tree. <laughs> but I hope you guys liked this new blurb and this book review and oh my gosh, I definitely recommend this book if that wasn't clear. So anyway, I will talk to you guys again very soon. Bye!